once again. It's Alabama Chris Bill. Welcome back. We've got some uh, fun uh, podcast for you today. A great story about a uh, an event in Selma and a, a story that kind of in history that ties into that event and, and it's one of the locations. So I think it's going to be a pretty interesting story and, and in some cases kind of spooky. But uh, first of all, I want to welcome my uh, co-host, Hello. Uh, Donna Causey. Here How again. are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? <laughs> doing? Doing fine. Well, the first thing we want to talk about today is an event coming up that's kind of unique. And it's really special. For those that are interested in historical architecture or the historical antebellum homes, the, they're upcoming in March 16th and 17th of 2018. We have the Selma Historical Pilgrimage. This is a, a basically a tour of the beautiful homes, the antebellum homes in uh, downtown Selma. And they do it over a couple of days and they have a lot of different they've uh, tours. Of, I believe it's like 10 or 12 homes. Yeah, it's a lot of them. Selma has a beautiful, in fact, I think that somebody counted them, I don't know how many it is now, but somebody said that it was around Selma, there were about 1,250 homes that are old and antebellum and all. So I, I'm sure some of that number is different now because some get destroyed of course, in time, but they have a wonderful place to visit. Yeah, these are all 1800 era homes and uh, with beautiful gardens and uh, all the different landscaping and uh, his- history around them. And they're going to have tours through those homes. And I think it's a set of homes one day and then another set of homes the second day. So it makes for a, a nice, fun weekend in Selma. Then you can also see all the other historical sites there as well. And I believe it includes Kenan's uh, Mill, which Ken- is a Kenan's Mill, uh-huh. uh, Kenan's Mill uh-huh. which is going to be uh, the, what we're tying into the story that we have today. So you can kind of see where what we're talking about in the podcast actually took place. Another nice little fun thing about the uh, this event is they're going to have uh, musicians and uh, different uh, arts and crafts in place as well and different things you can buy, such as like if you go to the Kenan's Mill, you can, they're going to be, it's going to be in, in, in operation and they'll be grinding up some porn meal that you can purchase there as well on site. So you can kind of get the whole effect of that era and the time. And, and see some beautiful, beautiful homes and take a stroll through the picturesque downtown uh, Antebellum, Selma. Right. It's, it's a beautiful place. And everybody's heard of Selma for a lot of different reasons and all, and connected with civil rights and all. But it's nice to stop and, and look at the history, too, you know, and see, see really go back into the 1800s when it was first. It's one of the oldest cities in the state of Alabama. And a, and a lot of, I know some people, I mean, they make a, their pilgrimage to Selma in the sense of traveling a long way just to go to this event. So it's a really a, a, a unique event. It's been going on for a little t- some time now. And I think it's if you 2002, do want to find out more about it. Sure, not. But 2000, t- 2002? 2002, yeah, I believe. It may be longer okay. than that. It's an annual event every March. Okay. With the weather getting better and the spring blooms starting to pop, uh, it all it would also be uh, some... Yeah, it'd be really beautiful. And to find out more information on that, you can go to their, their website at selmapilgrimage.com. They do have tickets on sale for this. There's There are some free events, but you can also, you know, I think the price range from 5 to $50, depending on how many tours you want to go on or which days you want to go on, or if you just want to do the basic one house tour or want to look at the just the grist mill. But you can kind of see the packages there and make your decision and kind of do it all a la carte. Yeah, however yeah. you want to, but it looks like a fun event. Right, right. It's going to be a really pilgrimages are always fun, you know, especially in the south and the weather we have and the beautiful azaleas that start blooming about this time. So it's a it's a good event to attend. And what we're going to talk about today is one of the one of the places you you mentioned Kennan's Mill. That's an old old area. It's, it's an old old mill. The Kennan's house also is going to be open, the plantation home. And there was an article uh, the start just, of it hall too, I believe. I think you've done a story on that in the I past. Think, on I think I have too. I, some of these are on the website. You know, you'll find more details and some of the pictures that go with them. Yes. And then for the new listeners, there, the website that we do is uh, alabamapioneers.com. So you can kind of see these stories and everything we're talking about in more detail. I, I was going to talk a little bit about Kenan's Mill today and tell you how it kind of got started. So I guess I'll get into that if you want to. Yeah, we'll go ahead and get, get that started. I think we've covered everything. Have you been to Selma? Oh, of course. <laughs> Everybody's been to <laughs> Selma, probably has been in Alabama. It's a beautiful place. And, it, you know, it's got so much history there. You know, it's the downtown area, and you've seen pictures of it, but it's more to it than that. So it's, it's a good place to go have a nice spring day. I think this pilgrimage has started a little bit earlier than what we thought about. It's a, actually, it's a 
43rd annual historic pilgrimage. Oh, it's longer than that. Okay. I think that, oh, I know what that was. That was the when they restored the grist mill. And that's what I was looking at um, yeah, so about then in 2002 when they started having it running, you know. Yeah, then. the pilgrimage began in 1976, it says. So oh, it's been I just going kind of peeked at the website. Time. So it's been, yeah, it's been going on a while. So they've really got it down to it. Doing art, I'm sure. So it should be a, a great event. So if you can get a chance to run down there and be a little weekend trip yeah, if, you're, if you're nearby. One interesting thing is when Selma was actually burned down in 1865 by Wilson's Raiders, and the only a few surviving antebellum homes, which are going to be the ones on the tour, are out there. So that's that's what makes me even more unique. Oh, and if you like ghost stories, there's a lot of ghost stories going around there. It's also the home of Catherine Tucker Wyndham, the famous author. We miss her so dreadfully because she was such a good storyteller. But what she, was her book, 13 Stories, Ghost Stories George of Alabama? Jeffrey, the Jeffrey series and all. And then she also wrote a lot of stories about Selma. Catherine Tucker Wyndham was born in, in Selma, and so she was an authority on the history of it. She has a book called A, a Sampling of Selma Stories, published, I think, about 1991. It'd probably be a good refresher if you haven't visited Selma in a while and kind of get some idea of and when, while you're going around and looking at all the things, you can just know a little bit more about what you're seeing. Absolutely. And she's definitely a, a, a legend. And, and, you know, I don't know if that's the right word, but she is definitely a legend in the state of Alabama. I mean, because I, you know, I don't know if anybody grew up in state of Alabama without reading one of her books. Our, our, at hearing, some point. Her, our hearing her speak, she used to do a storytelling feature, you know, that was part of the the pilgrimage. Well, she, she would travel around with that, or would she do it actually in Selma? Well, she traveled around and she did in Selma, I think, on the Heritage Day. I think she was kind of very instrumental in the Heritage Day. I'm sure she was. So it's it's a wonderful place to visit. Take advantage of the good weather and get down yeah. there and see it. Great way to kind of break that cabin fever with all the with all the rain and get out and enjoy some of uh, the spring weather and spring blooms and the, and the landscaping. So, well, it's kind of a kind of fun story that we've got to talk about that ties into Selma and is also actually is a direct tie-in with the the name of our podcast, uh, Alabama Grist Mill. Since where this story is about a grist mill, and it's Kenan's Mill, and uh, you know, that you can actually see on the tour. And it's since it's Kenan's Mill in Selma, Alabama. So go ahead and just kind of lead us off and tell us a little about this story. Well, I'll tell you a little about the history of the mill first. Zebulon Mitt Butler was the early settler in, in a place called Valley Creek Community, just a little bit north of Selma, which was settled early. And he built a mill on Valley Creek to ground mill, grits, and corn because they were so, the people in um, early Alabama, of course, had to have a meal as soon as possible because that was just their way, the only way they could manage because trying to ground their, their meal any other way by hand was just almost impossible to get enough. He st- he built the mill, but Colonel Thomas Keenan and his wife Mary Rand came in the 1830s and they acquired the mill from Zebulon Butler. And I, just to jump in, I love the name Zebulon. That is such a... <laughs> I know what uh, I like. That's a, it sounds <laughs> like a good name. historical name, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they own the they mill. Need name, they need to name more more kids Zebulon. I think some of those names are coming back. I've heard of them time to time. But anyway, they, the family continued to own the mill until a family member finally donated it to the Historical Society. But there's ghost stories that are known about the mill. People say, though, that it's been known that cameras taking video recordings sometimes get fuzzy filming going on. And they claim there's some mist sometimes that move in front of the camera. There's even been people feeling touched you know, when I'm in there. So well, if you go visit the, visit, well, some visit the them, mill. Some of them might be, some of them might be touched. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I don't know. If you believe in ghosts, you probably might feel it a little bit more than others, I guess. <laughs> Absolutely. But, but and there have been white mist that have been floating around on the stairwell and flashes of light and the streak across the room. People have caught dark shadow people with eyes peeking at them, looking down from the beams in the mill. <laughs> Some people say, and one person even said that they saw a Confederate soldier dragging her leg, saying, help, you know, holding onto her leg and saying, help me. <laughs> so. You know, there's some really good experiences. A female, a female Confederate soldier. No, this was a male Confederate. So, uh, like the late woman was a female, I guess, and I guess he figured he could get help from her. <laughs> but anyway, there's oh, all kind of oh, things. I see. I'm sorry, I didn't quite explain that too well. There's a possibility you, that can happen on the pilgrimage day. You can't ever tell. The home of the Kenans. The, the pilgrimage is to know. The pilgrimage day is during the day, so yeah, yeah there may. 
There's the ghosts only come out at night, don't they? No, they come out in the day. They do that some in the day. You know, of course, there's well, some now, at now night. You're, now <laughs> but, you're just creeping me out. <laughs> they do it in the day. So a lot of these accounts were during the day. You know, some people say their clothing gets pulled. You know. People feel different things. They're not vicious. Nobody's ever reported anything, you know, really violent or hurting them or anything like that. It's just little subtle things. Like the people still think that they live there or they're part of the community. Yeah, just let them know that they're there. (laughs) Yeah, I'm here, so notice me. It's a real interesting place, and so be sure and take advantage of going to that. And, of course, I'm sure there's stories about other houses that they'll be able to tell you, too, the pilgrimage. So how did they get to be named Kennan's Mill? It was named after the Colonel Thomas Cannon and his wife when they got it and okay. and operated it. And they the family came from Selma, uh, came to Selma from North Carolina with nine children. Can you imagine that? Probably had slaves too. I'm sure they did that, but they did have nine children. One of their children stayed home at their old plantation, which was called Liberty Hall, and he never he never really came to Alabama. He just ran the old plantation practice law and got married and all. But one of his sons was recorded as going to Central Military School in Selma. The Kennan family home is on the pilgrimage too, from what I understand. And one of the descendants of the family is opening the house. So there's probably going to be some good information more about, more than you're getting from me. The Kennan home was in the direct path of the Union soldiers when they came to destroy the arsenal. They, they didn't see anyone so, at home because so, they had so, left. So during, during that Wilson's raid that they brought right. to town. Right. They were on the that, that they were going through that home. Okay. Yeah, yeah, they were headed straight for it. So they knew they were coming, and I guess everybody got out of there. The Union soldiers piled all the furniture in the parlor and set it on fire. So it's very amazing that the house has survived. But what happened is servants who had been hiding around rushed to the, stop the fire after they were gone, and they put it out, and all that's left is a burn mark on the floor. You probably hear some more about that. You know, at oh, the, you actually probably can see the burn mark, too. You probably can. You can look for the burn mark. It's in the, par- in the front of the parlor. It's still visible, they say that would be interesting to see look well, for it if you imagine, go visit. imagine imagine of terror you know for the servants and everybody oh, yeah. on site hiding until the and then coming out when the troops are gone putting the fire out just trying to save their livelihood and oh home. yeah the cannon mill is one of a very interesting site there are many like i said there's many many more going on you know going back to catherine tucker windham there's some other stories you know she wrote a lot about selma and there's some other stories and one was Kind of really interesting. I put this on the website too, not too long ago when I was talking about General Lafayette. You know, he was he fought with George Washington, and and, all, and he came back for a visit to America in 1820s. In 1825, he visited the state of Alabama, and he stopped briefly in Selma. Catherine Tucker Wyndham told the story of a prank that the town citizens played on him at the time of that visit, which was really strange, and I wonder why they did it. <laughs> but he was tra- Lafayette was scheduled to ride by steamboat on the Alabama River. Since steamship travel at that time was kind of unpredictable, they weren't sure when he would ride exactly. So the best thing they could come up with is they just decided, to, well, we'll have a, someone posted out there. What they'll do, we got this cannon, we'll shoot it off, you know, when they when they see him. So we'll have time to all get ready and run down to the boat dock, you know, and welcome him in. And then they'd shoot it again for the town next that he would be stopping in next to go visit. Some reason, and I don't know why, I, maybe they were practicing, but they decided... Well, you know, it'd be neat to see what happens, I guess. And they shot the cannon off two days early before Lafayette was not seen. And so everybody came running down to the boat landing to see if they could see him because they didn't want to miss the event. And then they shot it again to warn Cabba just as they planned. So I kind of wonder if it, maybe it was a practice thing or something. They just didn't let the people know about it. Either that or some kind of practical joke. It might, that's what she thought it was, the practical joke. You know, and the people waited, though. They they didn't couldn't believe it because they wanted to see him. This is a major event. And they stayed through the, you know, into the night watching and hoping for him. He didn't arrive, of course. <laughs> Two days later, they did the same thing, though, when he did arrive. And they had a good welcoming committee for him. And he, they went to Whittle's Tavern, which was a log structure at the time and had... I imagine it wasn't as nice as anything he had in France and you know, other places, yeah, but, but, the, but that was the best they could you're do. The, you're out in the wilderness in the great wild wilderness. So. Right. There's a lot of good stories about Lafayette's visit, you know, and the, how the Native Americans even welcome him and all this. It's on the website, so be sure and 
follow up kind of yeah, well, we did research a future podcast. Go, yeah, <laughs> yeah in a future podcast in a so. future podcast we'll tell more about it but if you want to know right now you can go look it up on the website that, that's a beautiful place There's, if you go a little north of Selma you can see the Valley Creek Presbyterian Church that's where the gristmill went across Valley Creek it's the oldest Presbyterian house of worship in Alabama, and it's still in existence, believe it or not. In 1816, before Alabama even became a state, and Selma was just a, it was only a bluff on the Alabama River, a fleet of covered wagons carrying eight families and their household goods journeyed from Mecklenburg County, North Carolina. They crossed the Chattahoochee River and finally came to the hills of North Selma, where they pitched their tents. And they sat there and decided, well, you know, this is such a wonderful spot, we're going to call it Pleasant Valley. And that was they got that name for a long time. And they tried to get a grant from the federal government to settle there. And they began clearing the forest and cutting the roads and setting it up. So it's just a little bit north. That's where Cannon's Mill is. It crossed Valley Creek. They decided, though, which was really unique, that they would first build a church. And that's what they did. I can't imagine that. They're living in their tents. You know, you think they first want to build up something to live in. But they decided that was more important. So that's what they did. They built their church. And it's the oldest Presbyterian church in the state of Alabama. So the so the church they built was a Valley Creek Presbyterian Church. It's Valley, Valley Creek Presbyterian Church, and it's still there. It was first just a little log church, but believe it or not, just one year later, they decided it wasn't good enough. So they tore it down, and they rebuilt it and made a better one. It lasted a good while. Even after that, they decided later in 1857 that wasn't good enough, so they built it again. But I can't imagine, you know, you're living in a tent, and the first thing you build is the church. That tells a lot about the people. Valley Creek Creek Church became the center of the community, and they held camp meetings there, and they drew clouds from all over the South, you know, coming to that. And they they didn't just start stop there, though. They helped build and finance the first Presbyterian church in Selma, now one of the largest churches in the city. And they also helped in building the Alabama Avenue Presbyterian Church of Selma. So they started two other big, big churches, but they remained small. And the brick church still stands in Valley Grand uh, in, in encompasses the historic community of Somerville. Somerville's a town I've got to really tell you about. It's a very, it's a, a town that's gone. But if you have an opportunity to get out in that direction, you'll see some of Somerville and some of the old historic places there where it was really a, a, an elite place. The thing about the Presbyterian Church, it's over 200 years old now. That's a pretty long time. And so if you get the opportunity, don't just stop in Selma. It's just three miles north of Selma, so you can visit yeah. it as well. Yeah. So if you get a chance to go down to this pilgrimage down in uh, Selma, the historical pilgrimage, you can go check out Keenan's Grist Mill and see if you can run across uh, in, in, well, in addition to seeing all the history and, and actually seeing a uh, a real grist mill in operation and buying the products from that. You can also see if you can catch a glimpse of any ghost at that, that, that time or that place. Right. You have ghost ghost ventures and, and visiting the old church and it's, there's so many things to do. So they, you just, and see you the oldest church in the state oldest church in the state oldest, of Alabama. Oldest Presbyterian church. Oldest Presbyterian church in the state of Alabama. So that's, that's right. And that too and basically you know you see how that all ties in with the founding of Selma with the Ray original families settling on a bluff and having a, a dream of, you know, to live it in Alabama. Exactly. I, I, there's, I'm sure there's going to be a whole lot more than I can ever, we could ever cover in this podcast or all, in many podcasts that yeah, you, you can know, get yeah. at that event. So yeah, you it's a good see, opportunity. And then also get, see if you can see that burnt, burnt uh, spot on the in the parlor of the uh, the Kennan family home that you, yeah. that you can see on the tour. Yeah, but let us know on info alabamahighnews.com if you did get to see it or did get to or visit it. Or in the it. comments. We'd like to know. Are in the comments. Let us know if you got to see it. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and wrap this this podcast up or this episode up. And as always, uh, please share and uh, subscribe and do all those type things <laughs> with the podcast. <laughs> and look forward to because we plan on uh, getting a, a lot more out to you and a lot more uh, interesting and fascinating stories and events. And if yeah, you've got any, share your like, we, like we said before, yeah, if you've got any 
any events, let us know about it like this. We can usually tie it into a story about a historical element. That'd be great. And uh, with that, I guess we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Until next episode, uh, we'll see you later Sounds on. Good. We'll have old Red Foley play us out here with Alabama Jubilee. See, see you next time. Joe dancing right on his toes. Throws away his crutch and hollers. He let her go, oh honey. 